The operations presented in this video are meant to be instructional to ensure quality construction. This video is not intended to provide a comprehensive overview of safety procedures. All parties should ensure that they are familiar with and follow all safety requirements, policies, and procedures that apply to their specific operation. In this video, we will be looking at how to properly complete the pile driving log form CS1005. This covers the necessary information that must be documented on the pile driving log for all test piles and bearing piles. It is necessary to create a project record of the pile driving operation. Begin by filling out general project information, such as ECMS number, state route and section, as well as the contractor or approved subcontractor performing the pile driving operation. This information can be found within the contract. The structure number can be found in the title block of the structure plans. The structure plans will also provide information on the substructure unit, which is the actual location where the piles are being driven. Next, we need to document the estimated pile tip elevation. For friction piles, you also need to document the minimum pile tip elevation. Refer to the general plan sheet in the structure plans. Locate the soil boring symbol in the legend and determine the soil boring number closest to the substructure unit where the pile driving operation is to take place. On the soil's boring pages in the structure plans, the boring number will be located at the top left of the boring information header. The estimated pile tip elevation will be designated as EPTE or PTE, and the minimum pile tip elevation will be designated as MPTE for friction piles. Next, you'll need to document the estimated pile length. For friction piles, you'll also need to document the minimum pile length. Refer to the cross-section plan sheet in the structure plans for the substructure unit where the piles are to be driven. Find the proposed bottom of footer elevation, along with the length of pile extending into the footer. This is typically 1.0 feet for standard pile footings and 1.5 feet for integral abutments. Add the length of pile extending into the footer to the proposed bottom of footer elevation, creating a top of pile elevation. The estimated pile length is the difference between the top of pile elevation and the estimated pile tip elevation. The minimum pile length is the difference between the top of pile elevation and the minimum pile tip elevation. Next, we need to refer to the pile hammer approval for the hammer type, manufacturer, and model number, as well as the cap block material and thickness. Record the date the inspection of the cap block material was conducted. Make a copy of the pile layout sheet for the substructure unit where the piles are to be driven. Assign a number to each pile location and maintain this copy with the pile driving logs. Cross-reference the assigned pile number from the copy to form CS1005. To differentiate test and bearing piles, refer to the pile layout sheet for the substructure unit where the piles are to be driven. The symbol used to designate which piles are considered test piles is located in the legend. Any piles that aren't marked as test piles are considered bearing piles. For test piles, Document in the comment section the ultimate pile capacity and whether the wave equation analysis program or dynamic monitoring with a pile drive analyzer was used to determine the pile capacity at absolute refusal or end of driving criteria. The type and size of piles can be located in the pile hammer approval or on various plan sheets of the structure plans. The grade of steel can be found on the material certification or the certified mill test reports received on the project for the piling. Heat numbers are typically stenciled on each individual pile. Verify the heat numbers with the provided certifications and mill test results before any driving operations begin. If pile tip reinforcement is used, document the type as standard or heavy duty and cast or fabricated, along with the grade. If no pile tip reinforcement is required, Document as NA. The pile layout plan can be used to determine whether a pile is plumb or battered. Refer to the legend for the symbol which denotes any battered pile locations. Plumb piles are driven vertically 
and battered piles are driven in the direction shown on the pile layout plan sheet and at the slope specified on the typical section view. The driving criteria is the minimum blows per inch to attain the required driving resistance. The required operating stroke of the ram for the hammer being used can be found in the pile hammer approval. The operating stroke length of the ram is a critical component in driving a pile to its designated bearing capacity. The amount of energy imparted on the pile is directly related to the length of the stroke. Determine and record the stroke length upon reaching absolute refusal or end of driving criteria. You can do this by either witnessing the length of ram exiting the top of the hammer, the use of a saximeter, or a proximity switch. To determine the length of ram exiting the top of the hammer, measure the distance from the top of the ram to the top of the chamber while performing the cap block inspection. Subtract this measurement from the minimum stroke and the maximum stroke ranges indicated in the pile hammer approval. This will determine the minimum and maximum length of ram that should be witnessed exiting the chamber upon reaching absolute refusal or end of driving criteria. Confirm the stroke length meets or exceeds the minimum length indicated in the pile hammer approval, ensuring the pile has reached the designated bearing capacity. The starting length is the measured length of the pile prior to the initial driving operation at each pile location. Please note, this measurement will not include the pile tip reinforcement. The rebuilt length is where the starting length is too short to reach absolute refusal or end of driving criteria. The piles need to be extended by splicing. The length rebuilt is the additional length of pile spliced to the starting length. The cutoff length is the portion of the pile that was removed upon completion of driving the pile to absolute refusal or end of driving criteria. The net pay length is the sum of the starting and rebuilt length minus the cutoff length. Next, we need to make sure if the pile is within the allowable tolerances indicated in the referenced section. The actual pile tip elevation upon reaching absolute refusal or end of driving criteria. This elevation is calculated by subtracting the driven length of the pile from the bottom of footer elevation. While working with the structure control engineer and using the information provided on the soil borings, determine an appropriate depth increment to begin documenting the number of blows required to drive the pile that depth. These depth increments will continue to decrease throughout the pile driving operation, depending on the blow counts required to achieve these depths. The depths and corresponding blow counts listed in the blow count guidance block on Form CS1005 may be used as a reference to determine when you may decide to decrease the depth increment that you're monitoring. Document the depth increments cumulatively in the depth foot per inch column, along with the blow count needed to drive the pile that depth in the appropriate blows per foot or blows per inch column, until the predetermined driving criteria has been achieved. The following is a list of suggested items which may be documented in the comments block. Test pile or piles. If wave equation analysis program or dynamic monitoring with a pile drive analyzer was utilized to determine the ultimate test pile capacity. Ultimate pile capacity at absolute refusal or end of driving criteria for test piles. Pile drive analyzer results. Redriving data. Splicing notes. Augering, pre-drilling, spudding, pre-excavation, or jetting details if applicable. Cause of any delays or stoppages. Driving method, found on general notes plan sheet. And anything else pertinent to the pile driving operation. Finally, you'll need to record the test pile data for each substructure unit on the as-built plans in the pile installation information block located on the pile layout plan sheets. Also, provide a copy of Form CS1005 completed for all test piles to the District Geotechnical Engineer. Following these steps and paying attention to detail will help ensure a well-documented pile driving operation.